we also might have just stumbled upon the mother of all water reserves, floating in space. And it's been hiding under our noses for at least around 12 billion years. As for its size, it's hard to even imagine. 140 trillion times larger than all the oceans on our home planet combined. This cosmic water world is orbiting around a large black hole known as a quasar, located 12 billion light years away. Quasars feature supermassive black holes, spewing out colossal quantities of radiation. This one in particular is estimated to be 20 billion times heavier than our sun, and carrying energy that could outshine a thousand trillion of them. Here in our cozy Milky Way, we're used to seeing water in ice form. This water reserve in particular seems to be in the shape of vapors. The important thing about this discovery is that there may be water everywhere in the universe. We just need to learn where to look. You might be surprised to learn that not all stars are hot to the touch. We used to think all stars were like our sun, these blazing hot balls of fire ready to melt anything in their path. Their cooler counterparts are called brown dwarfs. What makes them special is that they're too small to pull off the nuclear fusion that keeps stars like our sun shining. They don't give off much light or heat, which makes them hard to see. These brown dwarfs are also split into different categories. There's this one group called Y-type stars, and they're the coldest, with a surface temperature lower than your average cup of tea. If you could reach out and touch one, you'd probably just feel a cozy warmth. Around 4 billion years ago, Uranus apparently switched places with Neptune. It's hard to imagine planets that big doing that, but this theory might solve the mystery of how our solar system came to be. We know that rocky planets formed after big collisions. Take our planet for instance. Around 4.6 billion years ago, things kept bumping into each other around the sun until our watery Earth reached its final form. It also included one larger collision that blew up enough rock and gas for it to generate our moon. But when it comes to our larger solar system neighbors, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, scientists still haven't got an answer. Standard models said it'd take forever for them to form, way longer than the solar system itself has been around. If this new theory is correct, it suggests that Uranus and Neptune came from this dense cloud of gas compacted around the Sun. Problem is, for the theory to make sense, they had to have swapped places at some point in history. Neptune is about 2.8 billion miles away, the farthest any planet can be in our solar system. Uranus is a bit closer, located at 1.9 billion miles. This new idea suggests that after they formed way closer to the Sun than they are today, their positions were altered. It could have either been because of many comets passing by over billions of years, slowly tugging the giant planets away. It's not a definitive answer to how gas giants were formed. It's more like a strong hunch backed up by looking at a lot of numbers. Speaking of weird things found in our universe, what about this floating spoon that NASA's Curiosity rover took a picture of on Mars? As the machine was cruising around the red planet, it stumbled upon this oddly spoon-shaped rock during the summer of 2015. The rock has a handle and even throws shade on the ground. It's not a leftover utensil from some Martian picnic, but rather what NASA scientists call a ventifact. That means it's a rock that got sculpted by the wind. It's not the first time the Martian surface has delighted us with weird, windy sculptures. There was the face on Mars, a rat, and even jelly donuts. It's also possible that diamonds are raining down on over 1,900 exoplanets out there in space. Scientists found out that you don't need particularly hot temperatures for carbon to turn into diamonds, like it was previously believed. Up until recently, we only knew of Neptune and Uranus to potentially feature sparkling showers. Astronomers were onto this interesting phenomenon for about four decades, but these planets were hard to study. We've only had one space mission, Voyager 2, swing by for a peek. A lot of progress is being made though, thanks to lab simulations. Neptune and Uranus are called the ice giants because their outer layers are filled with hydrogen, helium, water, and ammonia. 
what scientists call ice. And that gorgeous blue hue they have is due to the methane in their atmospheres. The beautiful diamondy phenomenon happens deep down, however. If we could visit, we would see that beneath the thick atmosphere, there are layers of very dense ice. And under all that pressure, chemical reactions are happening, possibly generating diamonds the size of a small town. We can't just dive into Neptune or Uranus with a diamond-seeking probe. Instead, the same conditions are being replicated in labs here on Earth, squeezing matter between diamond anvils and zapping it with lasers to mimic the extreme conditions. Under these circumstances, scientists managed to create artificial diamonds. Understanding how these rocks form down there could also explain why Neptune is hotter than it should be and why it's got such intense storms. These diamonds might also be the key to unlocking the mystery of Uranus and Neptune's weird magnetic fields. If we compare it to our planets, it doesn't behave the same way, so there may be weird things happening under the surface to affect the magnetism. NASA's plans include sending a new probe to Neptune or Uranus in the next decade. With the planets aligning just right in 2030, it's the perfect time to explore these potentially diamond-filled worlds up close. Planet Kepler-78b is another weird cosmic discovery. It's a hot, molten world that's doing laps around its star in record time, once every eight and a half hours, and pretty close, less than one million miles away. Hot environments aside, if we could set foot on its surface, we'd notice its sun being 80 times larger on its sky than the daily view we have here on Earth from our star. If we apply what we know so far about how planets form, this little guy shouldn't even be there. Specialists still don't have a clue how it came to be or how it ended up where it is now. What we do know is that it will disappear soon. Sort of. Since it's so close to its start, this scorching hot planet is going to collide with it in a couple of billion years. Sounds like a lot, but it's a cosmic jiffy. What's similar between our planet and Kepler-78b is the density. Sure, it's about 20% bigger than Earth and weighs almost double, but it's got that same solid interior. There's no possibility of it forming any closer to its star and simply moving away with time. It also couldn't have been born much further away and migrated in. Any movement inward would have been unstoppable and it would have also collided with the star. This may not be a particularly groundbreaking discovery, but chances are you've never thought of it. There may be space dust in your hair right now. Every day, loads of outer space matter comes raining down on Earth. Sometimes we get flashy objects, like when a meteor turns into a meteorite by crashing down to the ground, but most of the time, it's quieter. This cosmic material drifts down through the atmosphere, landing softly as what we call space dust. It may not sound like much, but it does add up to around 14 tons every single day. This space dust contains tiny fragments of rock and metal, broken off from asteroids and comets during big collisions. These particles are very small. You can't see them without special tools. But every time you step outside, some of it might land in your hair. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.